that night he died. So that shit fucked my head up. I'm like, damn. Holding grudges with niggas like that shit ain't like that shit. That shit like crushed me, bro. You know what I'm saying? Over the last few years, something terrible has been going on in Jacksonville. A deadly feud has been raging on between two notorious gangs, ATK and KTA, spearheaded by drill rappers Youngin Ace and Julio Fulio. This rivalry has spilled over from the streets and onto social media platforms like YouTube and Instagram, fueling a modern-day saga of violence and vengeance. Like any other old rivalry, this one has also resulted in a young, promising rapper losing his life way too soon. Before we get started, make sure to leave a like and a comment on this video. Also, if you would like to join this month's giveaway of a brand new iPhone 12, then all you've got to do is subscribe to the channel and watch this video until the end to find and comment the hidden message. Good luck. Let's take a look at Julio's career. Julio Fulio, born Charles Jones on the 21st of June in 1998 in Jacksonville, Florida, was renowned for his raw and gritty music style, reflecting the harsh realities of street life. Growing up in a poverty-stricken and violence-ridden area, he found it difficult to escape the lifestyle that had surrounded him. Like many young men in his neighborhood, he became part of the KTA gang and soon started dissing members of the rival ATK, using his music as a powerful and controversial tool. Fulio's intense and often provocative tracks, which included diss songs aimed at rival rappers and gangs, quickly gained significant attention in the music world. His viral debut track, Crooks, showcased his lyrical prowess and unfiltered portrayal of life on the streets, setting the stage for his rising career. The success of Crooks opened doors for Fulio, leading to collaborations with other artists and further establishing his presence in the drill rap scene. His follow-up tracks such as Slide and Voodoo continued to build on his reputation, each release pushing him further into the spotlight. Julio and Youngin's Beef The animosity between Youngin Ace and Julio Fulio has been going on for over a decade. However, it turned more lethal in May 2017 with the murder of 19-year-old Zion Brown, Fulio's cousin. This brutal act set off a chain reaction of bloodshed, culminating in a retaliatory shooting in June of 2018, targeting Youngin Ace during a birthday celebration. Though Ace survived after being shot eight times, the attack claimed the lives of three others, including his brother. Julio Fulio took to social media to glorify the massacre, even mocking the deaths by making a t-shirt featuring young Ines's brother and friends. The violence only escalated in February of 2019. Fulio's younger brother, the 16-year-old rapper Bibby, was gunned down at an apartment complex. That same year, both Fulio and his girlfriend were injured in separate shootings, underscoring the relentless and pervasive nature of this vendetta. Adding fuel to the fire, ATK gang member and rapper k brazenly displayed images of fallen KTA members on the cover of his album, Bibby Out. k arrest in March for Bibby's murder came after he publicly boasted about the killings and taunted KTA by claiming he was smoking Bibby. Each name in k song represents a slain rival, a grim roll call intended to further humiliate Julio and his allies. The lyrical warfare reached new heights when Youngin Ace released Who I Smoke, a provocative track that prompted Fulio's retaliatory When I See You remix. In a macabre display, Fulio filmed the music video in a graveyard, holding printouts of the three victims from the 2018 triple homicide and singing Happy Birthday. Fulio's escaped death many times. As it happens with the risky world of street gangs, Julio's life has been at risk on multiple occasions, and once in October of 2023, he survived an ambush in Jacksonville, sustaining severe injuries to his foot. This attack was just one of the many brushes with death that has marked his tumultuous life. In November of 2021, the rapper was forced to defend himself during another attack in Jacksonville, this time using a registered weapon. His quick response during this life-threatening encounter underscored the constant dangers he faced. 
Additionally, in 2020, he was involved in a shooting in Houston, Texas. After the 2023 ambush, Fulio took legal action by filing a lawsuit against a UF health nurse, alleging that she compromised his safety by disclosing his location. Julio was murdered at his birthday party. In a heartbreaking turn of events, Julio met a tragic end on the 23rd of June, 2024. His life was cut short in a brutal shooting that also left three others injured. The voodoo rapper's final hours were spent at a Holiday Inn in Tampa. Stark change of plans after being ejected from an Airbnb for going over the occupancy limit. Julio Fulio had been celebrating his 26th birthday, a night meant for joy and festivity, which turned into a nightmare. He had taken to Instagram sharing his excitement and the party's location with his followers. Little did he know that that very platform that connected him with fans would be the stage that set up an ambush that ended his life. The echoes of a past incident came rushing back as Fulio's death occurred in the very same car where he'd been shot in the foot in 2023. The shadow of violence that had followed him finally claimed its prize. Youngin's diss track for Julio after death. Sadly, even Julio Fulio's death failed to serve as a wake-up call to the hardened realities of gang rivalry in Jacksonville. Within hours of Fulio's tragic demise, Young Yin Ace from the rival gang wasted no time in releasing a diss track titled Do It, a move that shocked and dismayed many within the hip-hop community. This swift retaliation showed the entrenched cycle of violence and retribution that seemed unbreakable. The release of Do It sparked widespread condemnation from fans and fellow rappers alike, who viewed the act as inhumane and insensitive given the recent loss of life. Rapper Tay Capone expressed deep disappointment in Young Inace's actions, reflecting on the tragic irony of the situation. He highlighted his own decision to refrain from dissing the deceased, acknowledging that such actions only perpetrate a vicious cycle of pain and loss. In his statement, Tay Capone said, Rip fully, he was cool ASL. We chopped it up multiple times. He was a supporter of mine, so it's all love 100-100. But this is the main reason I stopped dissing the dead. The universe has a funny way of showing you the same shit that it makes you laugh and cry. I'd done seen this before. But not everyone thought this way. Another artist, Spina Benz, posted about Julio's death as a victory. A celebratory nature of these posts sparked widespread outrage and condemnation. What about the impact of Julio's death? Following the tragic death of Julio, voices from Jacksonville's music scene and law enforcement have spoken out, hoping to use his passing as a sobering example for young artists involved in the city's drill rap scene. Jacksonville rapper Natalak reflected on Julio's character, describing him as respectful and lamenting the indifference younger rappers show towards cautionary advice. Natalak urged younger artists to heed the warnings about their actions and associations. Jacksonville Sheriff T.K. Waters echoed young Natalak's concern, emphasizing the gravity of the situation. He said that young kids think this is all a game. Sheriff Waters stated highlighting efforts by the sheriff's office to dissuade gang involvement and violence. Sheriff Waters underscored the hope that Fulio's death would serve as a stark reminder that the violence surrounding Jacksonville's drill rap scene is far from glamorous. He asserted, it ain't cool now, it's over now. It's over for him, it's permanent. In response to the heightened tensions after Fulio's death, Sheriff Waters detailed increased surveillance and monitoring efforts aimed at individuals connected to the rapper. Natalak, drawing from over three decades in the industry, emphasized that violence for clout among rappers isn't worth the risk. They're fighting over crumbs, he cautioned, urging young artists to prioritize their safety and careers over dangerous disputes. And with this, we have come to the very end of this video. Tell us in the comments below what measures you think need to be taken to make hip hop a crime free industry. Let us know your thoughts on the whole video down below as well. And don't forget to leave a like on this video. And if you're new to this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button for all of our future content. Thanks for watching. Until next time.